Hello and welcome to Stories to Fall Asleep To, the second season of Reading with Carrie. This mindfulness podcast incorporates ASMR elements to help reduce your stress, relieve your anxiety, and lull you to sleep. I am your host, Carrie Favel, and I am so thankful that you've decided to spend some time with me. New episodes air every Wednesdays on any device you listen to podcasts. Click the link in the description to find the podcast now. Thank you. Welcome back as we head into the finale of Season 2. I feel as though a heavy weight has been lifted off me and therefore I know that this is the right decision for this time. But that doesn't mean this is a farewell for forever. I do really love this podcast and I have so enjoyed reading these stories to you. And there are so many other stories that I could be reading. And so I do feel like this will come back, um, even if I might change it up a bit of how I do it and how I conduct it. I do want to reassure you that this is not a goodbye for forever. I am always here for you if you need to talk. The Discord is always listed in the description, or you can email me at readingwithcarrie at gmail.com. But as always, let's start with a brief breathing exercise. This is a compassionate imagery experience. It's a little different from the other mindfulness exercises we've done in this podcast, but I think it's really important to experience this at least once. So I'd like to walk you through this if it's okay. If you don't want to participate, Just focus on your breathing as usual and take note of any sensations you might have in your body. So I'd like for you to get somewhere comfortable. Maybe you're laying down or maybe you're in a nice comfy chair and just close your eyes. We'll begin by focusing on our breathing as usual, slowly and organic and natural. And we'll begin starting to take Deeper breaths in, but don't force your breathing. Really pay attention to the flow of your breath as you inhale, hold, and exhale, and just concentrate on your breath. And if your mind starts to wander, just acknowledge the thought and gently realign it back to your breathing. Really focus for a moment more. In and out. And now, I want you to imagine yourself outside in a grassy meadow. It's absolutely perfect. The weather is nice. The air is peaceful. And as you look around, you see a wide expanse of soft, luscious grass. The sun is shining softly through the trees, off in the distance. And a slight breeze rustles the leaves. The grass sways with the wind, and you can hear birds chirping happily, way somewhere off in the distance. You feel completely relaxed in this place, totally at home, and you start to walk through the meadow, the healthy grass tickling the skin of your ankles. Perhaps you've taken off your shoes, and you can feel the warm earth support your feet. You focus again on your breathing and how it is slow and rhythmic. And in the distance, you start to see something. It's the silhouette of another person walking towards you, but you can't quite make out the form yet. You begin to walk towards them as they move closer and closer to you. The outline becomes a little more clear and you can start to see that this person is in fact a child. It's just a child, very small, walking towards you. They're still too far away to pick out the features, but you can just tell from their height. They're very young. You continue to walk towards them and they continue towards you. And they look maybe three or four years old, that's all. They're so tiny. And you are starting to make out their features as the very young child walks towards you with their eyes wide 
and a beautiful smile on their face and you find that you are smiling yourself looking back at them. Eventually, as they get close enough, they start to run joyfully and you join them in a happy run towards them. This child is half jumping and bouncing rather than running. They're skipping along in absolute joy in seeing you. You're grinning broadly at seeing their pure happiness. You open your arms and scoop them up as they jump into your embrace with joy. Such pure happiness. They are as excited as you are and you find you can't help but feel joyful that they are here with you too. As you swirl around with them laughing and giggling in your arms, and maybe you are even laughing and giggling along with them, you know that you're completely enjoying yourself. And then, as you come to the last loop of the swirl to rest, you meet the child's eyes and you notice something, something in their eyes you hadn't noticed before. As you stare into them and they stare back into yours, you notice that they have the same eyes as you. This child is you. This child is a three or four year old version of yourself. And as you stare into those unassuming, beautiful child eyes, you feel completely and utterly at home knowing that this person, this young child version of you, is staring back into your eyes with complete love, complete joy, and the connection grows stronger, and you become ever more present with each other. You can feel your heart connecting together. Your hearts are almost touching as the love grows, and the bond grows stronger. And as you do so, as you stare into each other's eyes and see those loving, caring eyes staring back at you, you tell the younger version of you that everything's going to be okay. You will go through some hard times and you'll go through some amazingly great times and everything will be okay. You tell that young child that they'll always be loved by you no matter what. And when they need love, they can look inside, look to their hearts, through their eyes, and know that they are loved by you. And as you hold that child close now, know that that child represents complete love, complete joy, complete acceptance, and complete compassion. Notice that their energy passes through them and into you and your energy passes through you and into them. You are completely, entirely connected. You are so closely intertwined that the child starts to turn into you and you turn into them. You find yourself sinking deeper and deeper into love and joy as you hold close the connection to the deepest levels of the heart. Just knowing now that at any point you need, you can connect and be compassionate with yourself by looking into your eyes. Those child's eyes you've just seen, knowing you can have complete and utter compassion for you as a child, and therefore you can have complete compassion, love, joy, and happiness for you as you are right now. And now take some time as you come back to the room you're in. Know that you can always keep those child's eyes with you. At any point, you can close your eyes and see that child's eyes looking back to you with love and joy and compassion and happiness. And as you open your eyes now and bring yourself back to the room, just notice a couple things around the room you hadn't noticed before. Focus on an item that you haven't noticed for a while and really look and focus on that item and all its components for just a moment. And now take a few seconds to allow yourself to come back fully to the room, knowing that compassion and love 
is held deep within your heart. Great job. And now here is a translation of Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Match Girl. It was so terribly cold. Snow was falling and it was almost dark. Evening came on, the last evening of the year. In the cold and gloom, a poor little girl, bareheaded and barefoot, was walking through the streets. Of course, when she had left her house, she'd had slippers on. But what good had they been? They were very big slippers, way too big for her, for they belonged to her mother. The little girl had lost them running across the road, where two carriages had rattled by terribly fast. One slipper she'd not been able to find again, and a boy had run off with the other, saying he could use it very well as a cradle some day when he had children of his own. And so the little girl walked on her naked feet, which were quite red and blue with the cold. In an old apron she carried several packages of matches, and she held a box of them in her hand. No one had bought any from her all day long, and no one had given her a cent. Shivering with cold and hunger, she crept along, a picture of misery, poor little girl. The snowflakes fell on her long, fair hair, which hung in pretty curls over her neck. In all the windows, lights were shining, and there was a wonderful smell of roast goose, for it was New Year's Eve. Yes, she thought of that. In a corner formed by two houses, one of which projected farther out into the street than the other, she sat down and drew up her little feet under her. She was getting colder and colder, but did not dare to go home, for she had sold no matches, nor earned a single cent, and her father would surely beat her. Besides, it was cold at home, for they had nothing over them but a roof, through which the wind whistled even though the biggest cracks had been stuffed with straw and rags. Her hands were almost dead with cold. Oh, how much one little match might warm her. If she could only take one from the box and rub it against the wall and warm her hands. She drew one out. Ratch! How it sputtered and burned. It made a warm, bright flame, like a little candle, as she held her hands over it. But it gave a strange light. It really seemed to the little girl as if she were sitting before a great iron stove with shining brass knobs and a brass cover. How wonderfully the fire burned. How comfortable it was. The youngster stretched out her feet to warm them too. When the little flame went out, the stove vanished, and she had only the remains of the burnt match in her hand. She struck another match against the wall. It burned brightly, and when the light fell upon the wall, it became transparent like a thin veil, and she could see through it into a room. On the table, a snow-white cloth was spread, and on it stood a shining dinner service. The roast goose seemed gloriously, stuffed with apples and prunes. And what was still better, the goose jumped down from the dish and waddled along the floor with a knife and fork in its breast, right over to the little girl. Then the match went out, and she could only see the thick, cold wall. She lighted another match. Then she was sitting under the most beautiful Christmas tree. It was much larger and much more beautiful than the one she had seen last Christmas through the glass door at the rich merchant's home. Thousands of candles burned on the green branches, and colored pictures like those in the print shops looked down at her. The little girl reached both her hands toward them. Then the match went out. But the Christmas lights mounted higher. She saw them now as bright stars in the sky. One of them fell down, forming a long line of fire. Now someone is dying, thought the little girl. For her old grandmother, the only person who had loved her and who was now dead, had told her that when a star fell down, a soul went up to God. She rubbed another match against the wall. It became bright again, and in the glow the old grandmother stood clear and shining, kind and lovely. Grandmother, cried the child. Oh, take me with you. I know you will disappear when the match is burned out. You will vanish like the warm stove, the wonderful roast goose, and the beautiful big Christmas tree. And she quickly struck the whole bundle of matches, for she wished to keep her grandmother with her. And the matches burned with such a glow that it became brighter than daylight. Grandmother had never been so grand and beautiful. She took the little girl in her arms, and both of them flew in brightness and joy above the earth, very, very high. And up there was neither cold, nor hunger, nor fear. They were with God. But in the corner, leaning against the wall, sat the little girl with the red cheeks and smiling mouth, frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. The New Year's sun rose upon a little pathetic figure. The child sat there, stiff and cold, holding the matches, of which one bundle was almost burned. She wanted to warm herself, the people said, 
no one imagined what beautiful things she had seen and how happily she had gone with her old grandmother into the bright new year. Thank you for listening. I welcome you back anytime you need to hear a comforting voice or a familiar bedtime story. But for now, let's prepare your mind and body for some much needed rest. Start by checking in with your body and making sure you are as comfortable as possible. Place the tip of your tongue on the tissue right behind the top front teeth. Slowly exhale and empty the lungs of air. Through the nose, breathe in quietly for four seconds. Three, four. Hold the breath for a count of seven seconds. Five, six, seven. Purse your lips and exhale forcefully through the mouth, making a whoosh sound for eight seconds. Six, seven, eight. If you need to, you can repeat this cycle up to four times, but any more than four, and you might start to feel lightheaded or dizzy. Remember that if you find it too difficult to hold your breath on the count of seven, you can use a shorter cycle of two seconds breathing in, hold your breath for 3.5 seconds, and exhale for four seconds. Good night and sleep well, my friend.